Loudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here's another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your army to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. Today's program is a bright comedy of service life, best seen through the eyes of a baseball fan. That's right, sports fans. You better get a ticket for a choice seat in the bleachers because today's story is titled, Spring is Here. The first batter will be up in just one moment, but right here, I'd like to kind of pitch a few real interesting words out to you young fellas out there. Today, you young men of America have an excellent opportunity to learn a trade that'll assure your future. The many fine technical schools of the United States Army are training men in such interesting fields as radio, radar, meteorology, mechanics, electronics, many, many others, over 150 to be exact. You can become a qualified technician trained to do an important job, and what's more important, to do it right. So for full details about a real exciting career, you visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station. Remember, team up with the Army, and you team up with success. <laughs> On November 9, 1953, the United States Supreme Court ruled that baseball was still a sport, not a business. This ruling came as no surprise to the millions of Americans who pursue their interest in baseball to the exclusion of everything else. To them, the only business about America's national game is the business of waiting for another season to come around. To these millions, the worst crime ever perpetrated on man is winter. But spring eventually does come for Americans' millions. The first crocuses poke their heads through the soggy earth. Such lesser pursuits as basketball, ice hockey, and indoor track get crowded off the sports stages by news of sore shoulders, rookie performance charts, and strange predictions. There's a growing awareness that winter is over, that the opening day of another baseball season is almost upon us. The 416th Transport Battalion is stationed 40 miles north of Osaka, Japan. Their normal activity is heavy-duty trucking, moving supplies up and down the Long Island Peninsula. But off-duty hours are spent... Well, let the story tell itself. Out of way, Chucky boy! Burn it over, kid! Ah, easy, Chucky boy! Easy there! How's he doing, Pete? Oh, we gotta put a pair of blinders on this boy, Sarge. He can't find the plate to save his life. Okay, Pete. I guess that's the story again this season. No picture. Yeah. Wind it up, one. Okay, Chucky boy, hit the showers. That'll be enough for today. So what are we gonna do, Sarge? Well, I hadn't been transferred back to the States, we'd have done it sure this year. Ah, look, the only way we'll ever win that All-Island Championship is if they send Ernie Jones to Japan. Ernie Jones? Yeah, didn't you hear? He ain't gonna be with the Yankees this year. He's in the service. Look, stop dreaming. Even if he did come here, what would he be doing with a bunch of truck drivers? What's wrong with truck drivers? 416th Transport Battalion is an honorable group. You sound like a boy scout. Look, be realistic. The thing we gotta find is pitches, good pitches. Scout around, talk to the cooks, the company clerks. We don't come up with a guy who can chuck that apple. We might as well be playing fiddlywinks. Sarge, Sarge, he's coming. He's coming to Japan to the 416th. Pinch me, pinch me. I must be dreaming. Hey, <laughs> slow down, make your point. Give it to me straight. Who's coming? Where? How? Ernie Jones of the Yankees. He's coming here. You're kidding. No, no, sir. Help me. It's for real. I was in the clerk's office scouting around, and Myers, you know, he's a little guy in there. He tells me, Ernie Jones of the Yankees is coming here. 
He still can't believe it. I checked, Sarge. You checked. How did you check? I saw the roster, the roster of new personnel assigned to the company, and there he was, Ernest Jones from Bugs Flat, Arkansas. Big as life itself. Bugs Flat, Arkansas. Oh, I can't be the same guy. Oh, who else? Are there two Ernie Joneses? You know, they just don't publicize the fact that he's from a place called Bugs Flat. You know, I, I was... Look, we haven't got time for that. If he's Ernie Jones, we're in. Oh, one of those lugs from headquarters company take a look at this guy's fastball. Did you ever see him pitch, Pink? No, no, I never got to New York. But I heard that last game of the 52 series on the radio. You remember that? Do I remember? I was there. I had a seat right behind home plate. I could watch the hop on his fastball. He struck out the last eight men in a row. Last nine. He went through the whole lineup. I never seen a guy with more on the ball. And he's coming here, here to Osaka. <laughs> oh, it's a dream. That's what it is. A dream. Meyer says if I come into the company office once more, he's going to report me to the lieutenant. Okay, forget it. I want to know what's happened with Jones. What's he been, Shanghai? Yeah, he left the States over a month ago. His orders had him report to Osaka the day before yesterday. Shouldn't have taken him this long to report up in the city. You're right. It's probably them public relations guys from command holding him up. You know, for pictures and stuff like that. Yeah, you're right. Great pitcher comes to the islands like this. You know how the Japanese are about baseball. The army wants to publicize it. Yeah? Well, I ain't seen nothing in the papers. Hey, Sarge, you, you don't suppose those guys down at headquarters company have gotten him transferred in there? They couldn't have. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they, they don't even know he's here. They think he's still pitching for the Yankees. Excuse me, fellas, but uh, is this a 416th Transport Battalion? Yes, yeah, sure is. Whew, I can sit down and put on my shoes. When I got a long way to Trump, I sure can't do much with these city shoes. Well, where did you walk from? Well, I guess you call it um, Osaka. Osaka? Man, that's some warmth. Hey, you're out of your mind. That's almost 50 miles. 50 miles? Well, now, that certainly does explain why I've been two days of coming. You mean to tell me you've been walking steady for two days? Oh, shucks. That ain't more than a good stretch of legs down home. We go darn near that far to the general store. What did you do for Chow? Well, the folks in these parts sure do take kindly to a man in uniform. And that rice they got's almost as good as Paul grows on the marshland down in Arkansas. Arkansas? Did you say Arkansas? I sure did. Not, uh, not Bugs Flat, Arkansas. Well, saints alive. Now, how'd you know that? There just ain't too many folks ever heard of Bugs Flat. Ain't no bigger than a small-sized pea patch. Marty, it's him. You're Ernie Jones. Ernie Jones of the Yankees. Now, it's just like you two got powers to see what ain't rightly there. I certainly am, Ernie Jones. <laughs> I knew it was him. I knew it was him all the time. Hey, Ernie <laughs> boy, welcome to the 416th. Glad to have you with us. What's the Yankees' loss is our game. That goes for me double. Boy, Ernie Jones of the Yankees. Yankees? Uh, I, I didn't think I heard you rightly the first time. Uh, we don't have nothing to do with Yankees down our way. See, great grandpap, he fought for the Confederate. Uh, hold it a minute now. Let me get this straight. Your name is Ernie Jones, ain't it? That's right, from Bugs Flat, Arkansas. You say you ain't never played with the Yankees? Now, stranger, you're pushing your luck a bit. There is folks in Bugs Flat would have found them fighting words. Oh, I knew it, Sarge. It was just too good to be true. Oh, too second, good. Uh, you'll excuse me, fellas, but I got to be reporting in. Uh, I, I take it that long, low building is the company headquarters? All that I need, just answer one more question. You know anything about baseball? Well, now, that's right funny you should ask that, because I don't. Not a darn thing. See, we ain't got much land down the home, and what we do have is either marshland or rolling up and down a hill. There ain't nothing you'd call level land. But one of the fellers in town, he, he went to Little Rock once and seen the game. He come back to Bugs Flat all, head up like the fever got him, and decided we all got to play this new game, baseball. Well, sir, he sent away to the mail order house, and he got a bat and a ball and a catcher's mask, and he lined us up on the slope in front of Murray's place. And we got the idea right enough, and we had a rouser going for an inning or two, but then you know what happened? 
No. What? Well, Jeremy Daniels, he was a pitching, and Tromper Martin was at the bat. So Jeremy, he wound up, and he threw the ball like he was trying to win one of them Cupid dolls at the county fair. And Tromper hit that ball kerplunk like that. Well, sir, it taken off. Tromper's a mighty strong boy. And it rolled right up the mountain, quite a spell, too. And it landed right in Nellie Chester's yard, right next to her goat. Well, sir, that goat swallowed the ball. Meantime, Tromper Martin, he started to run. And he run so far and so fast, he ain't been seen in Bugs Flat to this day. Anyhow, Mayor Phillips, he got mighty upset when he heard about Tromper and how the goat died. So we just don't play much baseball around Bugs Flat no more. Besides, there ain't too much level land. Oh. Well, I'll be seeing you fellas around. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be seeing you around. Okay. Okay, that's fine. I'll just back it up a bit. Hit! Oh, that's swell, Ernie. Leave it there. Sakes alive. This spring air is enough to set a man to flying. Oh, if I was back home now, I'm all to give me a big dose of sulfur and molasses. <laughs> Like it here, huh, Ernie? Oh, yes, sir. I sure did find a home yeah, in the Army. If you'll sign these invoices, I'd just about wind you up for today. You know, it's kind of funny about Japan. Mm -hmm. But the green in them hills is exactly the color we got in our hills back in Arkansas. Huh. Hiya, Schultze. Oh, hi. What do you say, Marty? Truck all right? Yeah, it's fine. Uh, we uh, lost again last night, huh, Sarge? Yeah. That makes it three straight. Hi, Ernie. How are things in the hills? Hi, Sarge. Hmm. Tough luck, Sarge. But things are bound to pick up. You can't lose them all. Who says we can't? By July, we should be holding up the whole league from the bottom. Hillbilly, if you was only the real Ernie Jones... I ain't no hillbilly. Oh, knock it off, Sarge. Ernie's a good kid. Can he help that there are two guys named Jones? Okay, Schultz, I guess you're right. Sorry, Ernie, but hearing your name on the company roster kind of raised my hopes. Forget I even mentioned baseball. Sergeant, you know, I've been a thinking. We do a lot of rock hunting down home. Look, Ernie, I don't want to be late for chow. We'll see you later. No, now, serious, Sarge. I, I'd like to help if I can. You got me. I'd sure like to know how. I'm a rock hunter. And I'm Clark Gable. Well, see, I got to prove it to you. <laughs> prove what, Ernie? You see, down home, powder and bullets is pretty expensive stuff. So unless we're really getting something for the table, we go rock hunting. You already said that. Okay, now, now, let me show you. First, I pick up a sizable rock like this. Yeah. See them two crows circling up there? Yeah, but you're not going to hit those. <laughs> I'm sure enough going to try and hit one of them. Here they come. And here I go. Mackerel, Ernie. You got him. Yes, yeah, that's rock hunting. I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. And you do that any time you want. Well, I don't always hit them square between the eyes, but it's mighty rare that I don't at least fuss little feathers. Ernie, yes. my boy, all is forgiven. I think we got a little surprise in store for the rest of the bums in our league. <laughs> It's very simple. You put the glove on one hand, hold the ball in the other. No, 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 just the other way around. Now, how's that, Sarge? Fine, just fine. Hey, Pete, all up your mitt is a target. Okay? Yeah, that's fine. Now, Ernie, just wind up and throw. Wind up? Ooh, why did I have... Look, it's very simple. Just loosen your muscles up a bit by swinging your arm around. Uh -huh. And when you feel like you can't hold that ball no longer, let it fly. Uh -huh. The object is to hit Pete's catcher's mitt just like you hit that crow right between the eyes. Okay? What, you mean hard like? You mean just, just rear back and throw? Hard as you want. Okay, sir, just like you say. Ready, Pete? Here she comes. <laughs> Hi, 
You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Spring is Here, and we will return for our second act curtain in just one moment. Today, your rapidly expanding United States Army needs intelligent young men with ability and ambition. Men intelligent enough to recognize a vital need for a strong armed force. Men with ability enough to be trained in a necessary job. Men with ambition enough to secure the future for themselves and their loved ones. Well, now tell me, fellas, does this description fit you? Can you qualify for full information on how you can fit in with the finest? You check with your nearest United States Army recruiting station. Remember, team up with the Army, and you team up with success. If the Battle of Waterloo was won on the playing fields of Eton, then most certainly an insight into America's future greatness can be culled from the rallying cries in the left field stands at Ebbets Field. Baseball is not America's national game without reason. Speed, action, skill, fair play. These are all keynotes to the American character, and these are all part and parcel of the game of baseball. Most of all, though, there's a resolute determination to win. Just ask any baseball fan who's going to win the pennant, and he'll shout the glories of his own team. At the moment, though, halfway around the world from Ebbets Field, on the island of Honshu, no one is shouting the glories of anything or anyone. For the game is yet to start. Sarge, I'm scared. Who ever heard of an American soldier being scared? Yeah, who? All you gotta do is get out there and pitch, just the way I taught you, right? Yeah, but not too hard. You throw them as hard as you want. Just mix them up a bit. A few hard ones, a few soft ones, and if you don't get into trouble, you might even try curving one or two, just like I showed you. Pete will call them for you. All you have to do is throw. Well, okay, Marty. Only I'm only doing this because I sure feel so bad that I ain't the real Ernie Jones. If it wasn't for that, I'd be darned if I'd go out there in front of all the fellas in this silly suit. Ernie, am I going to have trouble with you? Oh, I guess not, sir. Play ball! Okay, Ernie boy, this is it. Your big chance. Oh, my ma told me there'd be days like this. <laughs> Atta boy, Ernie, you look great out there. Just great. I knew you had it. Oh, you said it, Sarge. He sure does. He's got the meeting out of his hand. Oh, I'm tired. Don't let down now, Ernie, boy. It's only the top of the sixth. How many more of these here innings I got to go? It's only three more, and At the rate you're going, it should be a cinch. Oh, I ain't going to make it. I got a feeling right here I ain't going to make it. Hey, Spanner, go. Ernie, you're up. Well, now, see, now, if I just didn't have to swing that big stick up there, I just might be able to muster up enough muscle tone to tolerate these last three, what you call them, innings. Ernie, no one's asking you to be another Ted Williams. Who's Ted Williams? You, you better get going, Ernie. Well, just take your time. Don't even lift the bat off your shoulder. Okay. What do you think, Sarge? Is he going to do it? It's a miracle he's come this far. I'm telling you, if this kid is an example of the breed of rookie the Army is getting, we got nothing to worry about. You're right. Yeah, they're booing him for not swinging at him. Let him boo. He's got more guts than any ten of those guys watching. Yeah, he's holding that bat like a hockey stick. He makes a good target. He don't turn around a bit. He's going to get winged. You're right. Shoot. Yeah. Give Kelly the bunch sign. Let's try and get a man on when Ernie's out of there. Okay. You know that guy's got great eyes. I could have taught him how to bat, too, if we had time. Oh, Marty. He's hit. He's clutching his pitching on me. Come on. Yeah. Stand back, stand back, you ghouls. What are you trying to do, Mighty, my boy? Oh, my arm. Tiny, tiny boy, you all right? My arm. He's like something's busted. It's his pitching arm, Marty. He says his pitching arm is broken. What do we do, Marty? What do we do? Tell Gianelli to warm up. Oh, I knew it was too good to be true. I just know it. I mean, walking up and down the corridor that way. You look 
Just like one of them expectant fathers you always see in the movies. Now that you mention it, I feel like an expectant. Oh, you're kidding. You, you're the news of what's going on in there. Now look, don't make no difference. He's through for the season, whatever condition his arm is in. You know, sometimes I think that's all you've got in your mind, baseball. They opened your head up, that's all they'd find inside, just one home plate. Uh, I feel responsible for this kid. I talked him into it. Look, Sarge, he talked himself into it, and you know it. Him and his rock hunting. Hey, you're up, huh? Come up. How'd the game come out? We win it on Collins, scratch single in the eighth. The doctor didn't put a cast on your arm. No, he says it's just bruised. I can go back to regular duty anytime I want to. He says I shouldn't try pitching for the rest of the summer, though. Well, that's that. Huh? Yeah, I guess so. Ernie, uh, just wanted to tell you I'm sorry I got you in all this. Oh, Sarge. That's, that's mighty nice of you saying you're sorry like that. Which weren't no reason to. Well, I don't know. If I hadn't been so all fired up about Ernie Jones or the Yankees coming here. Oh, you're making me sick. Sarge. Does having that Yankee here really make that much difference to you and the rest of the fellas? Yeah, I guess it does, Ernie. No one likes to lose, especially this year. You see, when I heard that the big leaguer was coming, I bet Sergeant Kowalski over at headquarters company my whole furlough paid that we would finish ahead of his guys this year. And all cause this Yankee. Hey, if you two are through making goo-goo eyes at each other, ain't it time we was getting back to the barracks? Well, ho hold it, Pete, just a minute. Ernie, my great grandpap, would sure be fired up if he saw some consign yank getting a drop on me. What are you saying, Ernie? Well, I swore I weren't going to tell you this. Tell me what, Ernie. I can hit them birds better from the nether side. From what? I'm much better rock hunting with my other arm. What? See, I never fuss the feathers from my left. It's always right between the eyes. Well, I swan. Sergeant, I swear, you're beginning to sound just like the folks down home. Okay, Ernie, this is the old ball game. Win this one and we're in for sure. Ain't I won enough yet, Sergeant? Just my 35th straight game. I see old Pepper in there, Ernie, boy. Since we started using the other arm again, we've been alternating, haven't we? Alternating? Switching arms. One game on one arm and the next game with the other. We've got no reason to complain. Besides, the season's almost over. Well, I sure am glad of that. I thought it'd never end. Let's go! Play ball! How's he doing, Pete? Oh, great. Just great. Burning them in a mile a minute. <laughs> Even when they see him, they can't hit him. That's my boy. Did you double your bets like you said you was going to? Double them and triple them. How can we miss? The old seventh inning stretch, Ernie, my boy. Just flex your muscles a bit. You ain't got no muscles left to flex. Look, finish this one and you got the whole weekend to rest. The weekend? Yeah, the Far East playoffs don't start till Monday. I thought we was finished after today. Annie, my boy, we're just beginning. We get the All Island under our belts, then we win the Far East Championship, send off to Germany for the Army World Series. Now we got 40, 50 games left to play. And I got to pitch them all? I'm counting on you, Annie, my boy. I'm counting on you. All right, Ernie, last of the night. Burn it in, boys. Here I go. That's it. That's pouring it on, kid. Time. Hey, Ernie, what are you signaling time for? All you got to do is get this last guy out. Now we can go home. Pete, I ain't going to make it. This is unnatural, my throwing myself around this way. My body's a crying for help. I think I pitched my last pitch. Oh, come on, Ernie boy. You you got it in. You use your other arm for a while. I just did. Oh. This is no time to stand around, John. You got two strikes on him. Give him a fastball on the inside and we're home. It just ain't no fastball. Ernie, I'm counting on you to come through for me. All right, Sarge. I'll give her a try. 
And while I'm coming through for you, I'm not sure I'd like to know whether I'll be able to come through for myself. Play ball. This is the big one, Ernie, boy. Put it right here. Right the old mitt, boy. Right the old mitt. <laughs> Ernie! says we can go in if we don't stay too long and we don't disturb her. Okay. Hi, Ernie. Hi, Sarge. Pete. Hi, Ernie. Did we win, Sarge? Yeah, Ernie, we win. After that ball conked you, it took one long bounce out in the center field where DiMatteo caught it and he got the man sliding it to second. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad. I wouldn't have made it no way. Doc says I'm suffering from the complete exhaustion. Oh. He was pretty angry when he heard about my pitching all them games. Well, if you think he was angry, you should have heard the cat. Yeah, had all right. Not even a scratch. I'm just tired. Captain told Marty he was abusing privileges. He's got Lewis, who works over in the ammo dump, managing the team now. He still can't see what I've done wrong. Ask the captain. He'll tell you. Look, um, I need, uh, when you get out of this service, well, uh, good pitches are hard to come by. Not a dodge. Wait a minute, Sarge. Hold it. I do thank you. And I certainly do appreciate you thinking of me in this way. But I've decided that the Army's going to be my career for a long time to come. Besides, Doc was saying I got the extraordinary eyesight... And he says I should be out on the rifle range instead of wasting my time on the ball field. So when they let me out of the hospital, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in for the ranger training. I guess there's no use trying to talk you out of it, is there? Well, no, I expect not. Well, the Dodgers loss is the Army's game. <laughs> Young ladies between the ages of 20 and 33 who are college graduates, you are eligible for an executive career in the United States Army. If you can qualify for a direct commission in the Women's Army Corps, you will have many career fields from which to choose. Personnel and administration, legal and legislative, civil affairs and military government, many, many others. You ask your local Army recruiter about how to start your career on the right side of the desk. The executive side. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Army, and this is Richard Hayes speaking, inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>